Hey everybody, Jordan Pomana here with another video. Today I am accompanied by my two good friends, David and Jeff. Um, these guys are some of my closest friends. We do a lot of photo and video adventures together. So today we are going to be editing each other's photos. I think we all have very different styles of photography and video. Um, Jeff is a wildlife and outdoor photographer. I do a lot of live event stuff and David does a lot of portraits and wedding photography. We all have the raw photos in Lightroom and we're going to go one by one, edit each photo. The only rule to this is no presets. We're gonna go totally from scratch, from top to bottom. I'm, I'm nervous, I don't know how to edit wildlife photos. I don't know how to do portrait shots really, so let's get into it. Let's right. do it. So, let's start. We're gonna start with Jeff's photos. We'll do the bison one. All right, we're gonna do the bison cool. one. Tell me about this photo before we start. This one was in Yellowstone National Park. A lot of times with wildlife, you have to be out kind of um, waiting for the shot hours on end. Here, this bison was walking across the road. So I popped out and uh, was able to get a close-up shot of this guy, so. Definitely different because this is normally I'm used to people and so mm -hmm. colors that I would normally change don't don't affect it different yeah the same there's definitely a different feeling editing a photo that's not yours it's one thing to edit the photo but mm -hmm. like for you you know you were in this moment when you took it I actually like editing it to look dramatic because the goal is to give the viewer the same feeling that I had when I was you know face to face with that animal I think I had a crash. I don't know what just happened. Uh oh. Sometimes yeah. Dave edits so hard that his computer just genuinely cannot handle it. Mm -hmm. I think I just crashed. She said, uh, if you need to return this, Dave, you can probably get some cash to put into the laptop. <laughs> All right. First photos are done. Uh, we had a uh, minor fatality with his computer crash. But we're back up, so let's start with Jeff's photo. Let's bring it up. All right, the original image is a little bit underexposed. Um, definitely has a cooler tint. So warmed it up, brought up the shadows, dropped the highlights. Uh, for my photos, I usually like having uh, almost a lighting gradient, so it's darker on the bottom. Um, highlights coming on the top, so I brought up my highlights and then uh, use the dehaze slider a bit. The reason I do that is to bring uh, my own light source in from the top to kind of dust the top of the bison's head. And that's one thing that I do with a lot of my images too, is have the lighting coming from the top. Then I also drop the clarity as well to kind of push the focus to the center of the bison. So that's essentially my process for this one. That's awesome. Cool. All right, so moving on to my photo. First thing, kind of like what Jeff did was I warmed the image up. I felt like once I warmed it up from the cooler tone, it really brought out the colors and like the tree back here is horn. I've been using the tone curve a lot more. So I started with the tone curve and just did like a three point adjustment. I wanted to bring out a little more detail in here without like opening it up too much, just to keep the depth there. Like the first thing that drew me to the photo was the eye. So I used the radial filter and just kind of brightened that up a little bit. Can you explain to... your, your S-curve? Explain. <laughs> I don't know if I can. That's a totally, I'm not... So what I usually start with are the three main points here. I'll bring up the mid-tones first, just a little bit, because it kind of crunches the photo as you bring it up. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then from there, I'll work <laughs> with the blacks and the shadows. So I'll bring this up to get a little bit of a fade, and then I'll create, like I always do like a three-point down here. Mm -hmm. Honestly, a couple of these points I think I don't need, but it was just a matter of like creating a new point, seeing how it affects the image. That's pretty much all I did with this photo. So mine is definitely a, a little bit darker. I kind of stayed with the darkness in this one. I tend to have my photos really moody. This photo was shot definitely a lot brighter and I wanted to still keep, a, keep it dark, have a dark feel. 
So initially I started out bringing down the highlights and the shadows up and then the whites down and the blacks up a little bit just to kind of get some dynamic range out of it. Sometimes different files from brand to brand behave differently and they respond differently to the same edit. Right. So that was kind of something that I'd left and then I'd come down um, and I'd mess around with the tone curve a little bit. Uh, I messed around with the just the normal RGB. I like to have like muted highlights. Uh, that's kind of my my style. And then I went to color. Color is this one. Like you said, there's not a lot of color in this. Um, so I brought down the blues a lot because the photo was pretty blue to begin with. And I actually ended up increasing the oranges and the yellows um, just because there was a little bit of that in there that I wanted to bring out. I added a little bit of split toning in there, um, some sharpening to kind of bring out some of the details that are already there, and then profile corrections too, that's just an easy one click kind of fix. Um, I threw in some green in there, which I don't even know that you can see. I tend to really like like filmic type of photos, so I want to kind of mimic that. Okay, so I messed around a little bit with the calibration on this one. Um, that wasn't something that I had touched or even learned till the last couple years, and that was really from honestly using presets. I had seen some presets where they had messed with the calibration and so I decided like why not just give it a try. And really I'm sure there's a super technical explanation for it but I don't know that other than just going in and messing around with them. And that's pretty much it. So we did the bison photo. Um, we're gonna switch it up total 180 to a live event photo. This is a shot I took in China last December at a music festival. The lighting's really cool. The stage is just massive with this giant owl. And I thought this would be a cool photo to kind of see what they do with it. So let's get right into it. Done. What? This is one of those photos that is just not worth saving. Um... <laughs> Crash again? What in the heck is going on? Oh boy. I think it has an overheating issue. I'm sorry, man. And he's back. Yeah. Let's do it. All right. We're done with the edits. Uh, Jeff, let's start with yours. For mine, getting some yellow tints in the original. So, cooled it off a little bit. Um, then with my tint, went a little bit towards the green. Dropped the exposure. Um, decrease my contrast a little bit just to flatten it out so I could have a little bit more play with highlights and shadows. Bumped up my highlights to just kind of get that really lit effect on the stage. Increased my shadows, dropped my whites, kept my blacks the same. Increased the clarity a bit just to make it really impactful with, with all those lights. Did a really really mild S curve. Then played around with my hue and saturations, and then um, same thing with saturation and luminance. Um, didn't do anything with split toning. I did some noise reduction, just because when I bumped up my shadows, it was a little bit grainy. One thing that I thought was kind of cool with the brush, with these light rays coming out, a cool trick with Lightroom is down here, you can have uh, brush A and B. With brush A, I make it really small, then B is pretty big. So you click A at the point right here. I did it um, right on the main parts of the lights. That's genius. The small point there, then big point out at the end, and then you hold shift and click and it fans out. So yeah, it just kind of fanned out those light rays, made them a little bit more dramatic. I love, I mean, it's just like a very balanced looking image. And that's Thanks. one thing too I wish I, I had known earlier on because there's so many shots that I've taken where the light rays really hit into the lens. It creates yeah. cool flares and stuff and I never really accentuate those. Mm -hmm. That's an interesting technique. Mm -hmm. So I did a similar thing down there and played with the highlights to make it a little bit more dramatic or a little bit brighter on those heads. And then I used the gradient tool to drop the exposure at the bottom and on the top just to kind of point that focus in pretty much it. Right there. Awesome. Very high level Lightroom editing. 
Let's move Not on really, to... really, just winging it. <laughs> Let's move on to a more basic edit. So what I did was, again, I kind of go for like a very crunched, crushed shadows and dark areas. Um, for the most part, I think the color temperature pretty much stayed the same. I think I warmed it up a little bit. I wanted basically two tones from the stage. I wanted the blue and I wanted the red and the yellow to be more of the same image. Or, sorry, same, same color. And then again, I went to the tone curve. I started there, created my S curve, a um, bunch of points for the shadows and the dark areas. Um, just kind of tried to crush them down so that it would make everything else pop up here. More often than not, my photos are pretty underexposed for these. It's, for me, really difficult to get the right exposure in these shots. It's because there's a lot of things going on. You're kind of snapping and hoping that you get the right thing. That's more inexperienced than anything, but bumped up the exposure a little bit. Kind of played with the tones, but for the most part, I kept this area pretty tame. Brought up the shadows a little more just so I can get more detail out of the crowd. And then one of the biggest things that I play with is um, the HSL controls. So I'm always going through my hues and kind of mix and matching until I get the colors that I like. Um, I do some pretty dramatic changes in the hues. Like I bumped the red all the way to the right. I really wanted to match these colors down here. The blues were gonna stay there. I kind of turned the blues more to like a, a brighter aqua and then uh, created like this reddish orange. The color that I was happiest with that mixed well with the blues here. For this, I actually went down taking David's advice and played around with the calibration a little bit and I went with the blue primaries, um, bumped up the saturation and pulled it to the left to get a little more of that teal look out of the blues. As far as the crowd goes, I don't wanna bump up the crowd exposure too much, but I, I wanna see heads up there. You wanna see a large crowd in these shots. So I used the gradient, what did we call it? Grad, graduated filter or whatever. <laughs> I used that to kind of bump up the shadows a little more, threw a little bit of a dehaze on there to crush them back down. That's what I did here. David, see yours. Cool. All right, nice job. Thank you. Yeah, good job, dude. So when I first saw this picture, the first thing I saw was color. I knew that I wanted to, I could kind of experiment and pull out a lot of the color in this. So immediately I went straight down to color calibration or the camera calibration and just kind of started messing around there um, until I found something that I liked. Again, no rhyme or reason other than just feel. I knew that like the orange teal kind of look was going to be something that I was going to go for, but I wanted to balance it out with a couple of other colors too and not just totally overpower it. Then that's when I started to come back up and go to the exposure highlights and all that good stuff up there. I didn't want to mess with the highlights really at all because that would really affect the lighting that I want to kind of preserve in that. So I did bring the blacks down, some shadows up, and the whites kind of brought them up a little bit. Again, up with the clarity, just a little bit plus 10 there. This is just kind of like feel. For me, this photo kind of just felt like I knew what I was doing, even though I didn't. <laughs> But it felt easier than the bison photo for whatever reason, um, just because I feel like that the subject of this is the whole event rather than like a single subject. I didn't really do a whole lot in terms of the HSL. I brought the blues up because again, I wanted to kind of accentuate those and made a little bit of hue adjustments, nothing in the split toning, did some sharpening. That pretty much is it for my whole photo, so yeah. nice. What I've noticed from these, even from the last one too, I think of like all the little pieces of editing that I missed, like the sharpening, or if I'm like rushing an edit, I'll totally overlook them. And then I see what they've added with those things that I forgot. I'm like, oh wow, that really, really makes the photo pop. So it's cool to see the different styles of editing and like looking back on things that I can change in the future, like little editing techniques that I never even thought of. All right, last photo edit, we're moving on to David's photo another total switch up from the live events. All right, so this photo was shot up in Calaveras, Big Tree State Park, it's up in North California. This was an elopement that we shot after the ceremony and we were just kind of walking around the park and behind them is this big old tree that had fallen down, so we're in the middle kind of, of a tree stump and they're having their little intimate moment after they had been married. <laughs> Editing's done. All right, go for it. So Dave did a really awesome job with this.
this, first yeah. of all. You said that was inside a fallen tree. Yeah. Yeah, I really like that. And I thought it created, um, it's such a, just like a very intimate, calm, you know, moment with these two. And I thought the curvature inside the log kind of catered to that a bit. The highlights on the inside there, I just thought overall, it had this kind of dreamy look. So yeah, what I did is just kind of made it a little bit overall more moody, drop the clarity, hit the brush tool around to kind of bring up the, the highlights a little bit on the edges so you could see that background. Played with the light source a little bit more on that opening so it looked like more light was coming in and kind of illuminating the log. With my brush tool as I went around, um, I dropped the clarity just a little bit so it wasn't super sharp and um, distracting from the couples. And then I did a, a slight S-curve again. But overall, yeah, David did a really good job with just having a, a really cool moment. So I thought, um, I thought giving it that soft overall look was the way I wanted to take it. This was definitely the most challenging one for me. Like, looking back, especially looking at that one and then looking at mine, I'm like, oh. Yeah. First off, I so I started with a vertical crop, which I kind of regret doing now. But for this, I wanted to just go like straight fade, and so I did a pretty intense fade on the S curve here. I balanced the image, and then I didn't really know what to do from there. But I knew if I didn't do anything drastic, it probably wouldn't look any different. For starters, I desaturated the blues quite a bit in here. Didn't do too much here actually. I brought down the blacks, the whites a little bit, brought the shadows up. Um, really. The biggest change in here was throwing more fade than I usually would. On the face, I did a little gradient there just to kind of brighten up his face because before she has this really nice light, but he was kind of falling off a little more, so I wanted to match these as best I could. Yeah, this was challenging for me because I don't do a lot of these types of photos. I do wedding videos, but I think overall it's just such a different process. Anytime I've done lifestyle and portrait type shots in the past, it's been like a very basic edit. And so I just kind of wanted to do something crazy to make it look somewhat different. She, I feel like, would love that because of her hair. Like, it really brings out her hair. Yeah, yeah it definitely gives totally. the platinum look. That's kind of what I like back here, too. Yeah. All right, David, your All right, masterpiece. Cool. All right, so this one's different because I was there. And it, I feel like I, it always helps to have context when, when you are shooting a photo if you're there then you remember how it felt well, obviously this just looking at it it's it's a soft moment and for me I don't know when I think of soft moments and like memories I always think of film so it's kind of a muted but it's still got that moody feel and it's dark um, but it's not like totally crushed um, so that's always kind of like a tightrope that's really hard to walk because how do you make a photo dark with not without crushing the blacks and without like overpowering like mm -hmm. The black, especially with something like this where probably like 80% of the frame is all black. So I brought down the exposure again with the color calibration. I think I went to that first again this time just kind of that's like a basis, a foundation to kind of work off of because that dictates how your colors, um, how they react to the rest of your treatment after that. So after the calibration again I came back up um, and then I played around with the highlights and the shadows whites and the blacks um, this photo was all, all already dark like I was saying so I brought up the blacks quite a bit um, the highlights I usually like to bring those down because that helps kind of give you that mood that muted film look um, so and for this one too to go with the softness brought down the clarity I brought down the vibrance just because for me the blue in his in his suit was kind of overpowering and I didn't want that to be this the focal point and I wanted their faces touching to be that focal point. Um, so I brought down the vibrance for that. Again, tone curve, mess with that, go through the individual channels. And this one's hard because like I said earlier, the skin tones, is it's tough to keep that balance, um, especially while you're messing with with the different channels. So that one's just kind of a play and, and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. All right, so I messed around a little bit with the split toning, put some blues in the highlights, some reds in the shadows. Uh, that kind of just gives it a little bit more of a filmic look. A little bit of grain for uh, just some texture. And that's pretty much it. That pretty much wraps up the photo for me. I did clone out um, that little highlight. So kind of the opposite of what Jeff did, where Jeff accentuated that 
I just wanted to simplify the scene and uh, make the focus about them. So yeah, that's my photo. I, I think each one kind of has a different feel and that's what's awesome about doing this is that it, it kind of played into like the, the whole point of this, you know, yeah. seeing how each person would would do it. And um, I knew going into this video, like we were gonna see each other's styles reflected in each photo, but I didn't realize how drastically we'd see each style reflected in them. Yeah. Like with yeah. each photo, you can really see the differences in there. Well, I think we see scenes differently. You know, we see them through a different a different perspective. Really there's no one right way and I mean at the end of the day it's just it's it's ours. So it's yeah. it's what whatever you whatever you want to make it really so Thank you guys so much for watching this video. We had a lot of fun with it. Hit us up in the comments. Let us know what you think about these photos. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. Subscribe to David's <laughs> channel too. I'll link that in the bio. Um, he doesn't have a YouTube yet, but we're trying to get him to make videos. Comment in down below and force him. Tell him yeah. that he needs a YouTube channel. Until then, we'll see you in the next video. Peace out.